honoured to have you all back out here. Um, obviously, we're up here last year. Um, if you had a chance to read the email there last night, a bit of an insight. It has been um, you know, a very insightful and successful day to be a part of. Some, some great horses and opportunities were presented last year. So I'm hoping we can replicate that again this year and give you a great Breaking insight in process. Um, she was selected to be one of the first fillies to go to go through the breaking and, and we we do that I guess naturally they select themselves firstly by going to the to the magic millions you, you you're buying and selecting a more precocious type of horse up there um, they, they naturally select themselves they're ready for that sale uh, but then of those magic million purchases you know we felt she was just one of the more forward fillies that was physically ready to go to that next stage of her education so She's been straight through, through the um, through the breakers already, um, and you can see she she's um, she looks right at right at home here. Uh, lovely strong filly. She looks she looks great under saddle. Absolutely fantastic. Hey Nicholas, so straight away the mare's doing the job. Um, comes off a good farm in Newgate, of course. Born at New Haven, raised at Newgate. Short couple, sharp and. Uh, like I say, I'd expect her to get up and get up really early for everyone here that uh, ends up racing with Sharon. Her, I believe Sharon will be really here today. Their colours will be carried by this beautiful filly, the red with the white uh, band. So, uh, Cheryl Lee in the blue there. If you're going to race this filly, make sure you can take it out of Cheryl Lee because not only will hopefully be racing a fast horse, you'll be having a hell of a time with great owners. Margin, so he, he fits that profile. Um, of a stallion, um, he's, he's, I guess he's a son of a champion stallion in Exceed Nick Cell, um, who's thrown top class two year olds time and time again. Um, and this certainly just looked a, a lovely mold of a colt. We could have this colt up and going early. He looks, uh, looks an uncomplicated style of horse. He looks tough. Um, he's got the maturity there to, uh, withstand that that early racing again that profile that we're looking for um, one that has got the scope to also train on with and he's he's done a treat uh, throughout the last month of breaking in um, so really really excited by what we've seen from the microphones um, in terms of their progeny uh, but I, I thought this this one as an individual really stood out he's I think the first microphone that we've bought um but yeah one that we really wanted to make sure that we secured up at the sale yeah we had to really like this guy to buy him because he was selling on that uh, saturday night of the magic million sale and of course you all know what happened during the day on magic millions day storm boy won the magic millions two-year-old classic and we were all very keen to get off and go and celebrate that win rather than hang around the sale and buy more horses. We bought quite a few by then. Alan was calling us up here in the Navy shirt saying, come out guys, where are you, where are you? We said, Alan, we can't come until we buy next year's Magic Millions winner. And we stayed around, hung around, bought this guy from the night session. And, um, you know, as you can see, you can see why. Really flashy horse. As you know, I do a bit of work for Newgate. He's the kind of cult that you can see as he walks out here today. He could be walking out through some stallion farm doors one day and presenting himself for breeders. I think he's just a magnificent animal. We might just come and stand him side on down here if you don't mind. Just have a look at him. Just look at this horse's proportions. Like a few times we looked at this horse, we're like, you're just too good looking. Are you just too flashy? But then when you see him stand there like, just have a look at his proportions and I won't bore you with all the technical sort of biomechanic stuff, but he's just essentially a horse with the frame and the angles and the shape that's not only going to have a lovely length of stride, but he's going to turn that stride over really quickly because his, his cannons are so short, his pastons are so short. Really like this horse a lot. Obviously, out of a full sister to a very good horse in Sham Express too, who was uh, a new market winner. Of course, the new market runs tomorrow, so quite a timely uh, pedigree inclusion there for a horse given the race runs tomorrow. Lovely animal. Rahim Stud, uh, mum was a six-time winner. She was a winner at two, uh, Group Three placed, and this is her first foal. 
Absolutely love the, the progeny of Zoo Star. Um, he's been such a successful successful stallion. Um, and not just Zoo Star, but even that whole Zoo Star sire line of stallions we've had such great success with. And I think um, we've just tried to secure as many of his progeny as we can uh, throughout the year at all the sales. I'd probably say he'd be one of our most um, represented stallions now in terms of purchases and um, we, we do do that on the belief of obviously um, the success that we've continually had with these horses um, over time, um, the races that we're, we've won and, and the stock that we've got coming through. They've got um, got fantastic attitudes. Um, this filly you can see plenty of plenty of size and strength about her. She's got a great, nice big frame. She's only sort of going to continue to to furnish and, and, and develop for us. But as I said, uh, we just can't get our hands on enough Zoo Stars uh, progeny to, to, to train. They're, they're very versatile. Uh, they can be racing early for you too. Um, they've all got that scope to train on um, and be successful at three and four and, and, and go on races. You're, you're cementing your residual value in, in the horse, what you've paid for the horse. You're getting all that back very, very quickly. So we're always trying to maximize the returns for you guys and, and, and trying to maximize the, the time and that we're able to do that for you whilst you know hopefully giving you a, a horse that you can enjoy racing successfully and have a good time at the races obviously but um, these are the styles of horses that can do that for you. Um, some of you may not have heard I think we've trained 25 percent of Zoo Star stakes winners over the last three seasons have come out of Tullock Lodge. They love the Tullock Lodge system of course, his own size, Zoo Star Northern Meteor, came through the Tullock Lodge system. This is the next champion sire of Australia's Zoo Star team. He is 14 years old. The only stallions ahead of him at this stage are Snitzel and I'm Invincible, who are both 21 and rising 20. So, uh, you know, they just don't, um, unfortunately, have that much more time left on the perch. Um, and Zoo Stars, that next horse, is going to take their position. He currently stands at $220,000 per service. So being able to buy one of his very best progeny from one of the best running mares, buy a champion sire, written tycoon, for how much we pay for her? $300? Yes. That's $300. Right. You know, really, really a great value buying that filly. Um, naturally selects herself. I don't know. I was going to show you when she's out here the strength over her back. She's a very mature filly, very early filly. But a flea that'll trade on for you. A lot of things in your favour with the share and her. Our very first purchase of the year, eh, Bruce? This one got us got us off the mark, got us up and running. And what a nice horse to do it with. Early in the sale, uh, we can usually find the best the best value those first thirty lots where there's a bit of bit of nerves around amongst the complex, amongst vendors, amongst buyers. Bit of uncertainty, everyone's sitting back waiting to see what happens. Uh, we've got the luxury to be able to sort of go in and, and, and strike when we feel the time's right. And we're able to strike early with this particular colt um, who once again just looks that nice, uh, un uncomplicated mould of a, a, a very um, straightforward horse. Great constitution, well balanced and well proportioned, well developed. You can see just the, the natural muscle tone. Uh, that these colts possess very early in, in, in their careers. And that's a, you know, that's a, a big thing and a big indication for them. And um, he's done very well just in the short period of time uh, that we've had him. So um, he's, he's gone through the breaking process as well. Um, been very, very straightforward as he presents. Um, as you said, you can see a, a very uncomplicated horse for us. And, and that's what we want to see through the breaking, breaking process. Just a horse that's willing to willing to work with us, willing to, to listen. Um, and then I, I think obviously that'll take them a very long way, particularly in, in the early parts of their careers. But there's such an advantage. You, you are looking at the best we could find, the most early maturing stock. That is natural strength, everyone. You can't train that, you can't teach that. You either got it or you don't. And he is an, another thing, it's a sign of speed, but also a great sign of maturity. I, uh, this was probably the one of the easiest decisions uh, for us to, to purchase throughout the sale. Um, she just looked 
very well balanced, uh, a nice style of filly that would see uh, would see get up and run for. She was a real real professional, just a real sweet style of style of filly. Um, and stand by that after we've seen her once again once again today. Um, so she she like those uh, like the Farnham filly was put straight into uh, the first group of fillies to, to go through uh, the breakers. Um, we can only do a certain number at a time. So we are, of even though of the Magic Millions horse, we're still trying to pick the most precocious of the Magic Millions ones. So her and the Farnham were certainly in, in that group. And, you know, I think that's very easy to tell why. These um, naturally well-developed fillies, the, the, good, the good strength and muscle tone on them, and she's just a, a beautifully balanced style of filly. Yeah, mother was very fast. She's left very fast ones already in her young career. And this is where you really find the value, finding these young stallions on the rise, finding Alabama Express, Shangri-La Express, first crop, finding Storm Boy, finding Straight Charge, written by and, and justify, respectively, both second crop size at the time we bought those horses, right? They weren't proven. The market wasn't sure on them. Sorry, the market was sure on them, but to a level, right? They're never going to... The same filly by Stitzel might make two or three times more. A first crop stallion with the profile of Bivouac, we know he's a great chance of making it. He was such an elite racehorse. He was so naturally fast, and he's by a great stallion and exceed and excel. So, you know, these are the kind of fillies that um, can really escalate in value very quickly with the right form on the board at the racetrack. Beautiful filly, lovely big nostril. She walks away from you, from everyone behind her there. Have a look at the width of her gaskins. When she walks away from you, have a look at the, just the hocks are here, above here, the width of her gaskins that sort of kick a soccer ball through there. Just a great sign of strength. Fillies like that with hind legs like that are very hard to beat out the gates. They just have that power behind the saddle where they can drive themselves. She's going to love the Gay Waterhouse Adrian Bot system. She'll be banging out the gates quick. She'll be on speed. Before, um, before the rest of the field have sort of caught their breath and realised what they're doing, she'll be off and gone around that Randwick bend. And be effective through those classic races, through those, through those mile races, through the, through the derbies or through the oaks for the fillies. You know, Azul is another great example. She was 100,000 out of the classics. She won a listed race at two. Yet she'll train on and we'll try and set her for the Queensland Oaks. So uh, these are the, the I, I, I guess... The, the variety that, as I said, the stallion can provide. We all know how successful the Japanese um, industry has been over as a whole, how successful their stallions yeah. are. They're importing the best drive. blood but from all over the world to, to I guess, name, breed from in, in uh, Japan. Like um, you see wherever their horses go, uh, they're, they're just so line. successful and so dominant, no matter, no matter which country they ship to. Um, they are very hard to beat, so um, we're, we're lucky we're able to get access to some of their best performed racehorses, and, and Maurice has certainly been one of those, and as I said, he's, he's really had an affinity with um, uh, horses in mares in Australia, um, the style of racing in Australia, um, and I feel we've had some great deal of success with the progeny. So uh, if you are looking for that horse where you're saying you want a little bit more um, you're happy to have that little bit more time, you're happy to be that little bit more patient to the back end of a two-year-old season um, with the view of, uh, you know, the best is yet to come at three and, and going forward. Well, this is probably the style of cult that you should be looking at today. I think he'll certainly tick those boxes. In saying that, you know, he's still got, he's still got a lot of those attributes that we talk about. There's still a, a good element of strength and maturity there. Uh, muscle tone, balance, everything you, you still want to see. They've got to tick all those boxes for us. And I said, it won't be a surprise to see this horse racing at two, but um, he, he's got that upside for us. Yeah, I love the stallion because we've become very good at finding the ones that gallop. Um, he's a stallion that being Japanese, he gets some big horses team. He gets them with the massive big plain heads on them. He gets them with no pelvis on them. They can be massive lean 
light looking things but thankfully um you know the ones that do come in the sort of shape and style we like where their back matches their pelvis and they've got those short cannons a little bit of quality a little bit of strength we've been able to buy i reckon we've bought seven the last few years we've had kaboo azula gambare silent impact one other there i'm gonna think of um and then we've got like Mostro is a really nice horse coming through. And then one other that was genuinely sort of probably slow, right? Um, so we've become very good. The ones that look like the ones are the ones that gallop, which is, makes it so much more, uh, you go in there with so much more conviction when you do like one by the horse in the ring and you're prepared to go in and bid up and, and bid pretty hard. This guy was late on Saturday, 150 grand, terrific buying, great value off a great farm that we've had a lot of success with, of course. We bought Piero from Musk Creek Farm, so we've had luck with the farm, luck with that brand. And uh, yeah, we don't get the Morrises very wrong, and $150,000 is a nice price to play for a, for a high percentage horse. We're able to partner up on this on this filly, uh, so there's a, a small amount of interest in her available, but you, you're getting some intel, as we say, from some of the greatest minds within the industry. And I, I love when we sort of land on the same page. Um, so Emirates have uh, won the Golden Slipper on multiple occasions with fillies that they've purchased from a, from a yearling sale. They don't buy many horses each year. They buy very few. Uh, they won it with Moss Fund one year. I think they paid 50,000 for her. Um, she won the Golden Slipper. She might've been one or two purchases. And Esther Jab, I think they paid one point Two million for her, Schnitzel Philly. Uh, again, one of two purchases maybe for the year. So we're teaming up with people who know what their 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 very their strike rate, their intel, their percentages. They 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 uh, they're very selective. They're not um, they're not buying many horses at the sale. They've got to certainly make it count as well. Um, and this is the filly that we landed on with them. Um, so a written tycoon filly out of a Schnitzel mare. Uh, and that's proving to be one of the more successful crosses, I think, with Written Tycoon, which makes sense. Uh, you're getting the, I guess, the precocity from from both sides. Um, we've had a lot of lot of success with both stallions, and um, yeah, she looks. On she yet. certainly looks a yeah, nice, yeah, classy filly. This, this one. Sorry, just facing. Just my just way. spin her around the other way, facing just the other way, yeah. way for Thank us. You. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Great job. Um, yeah, plenty of size, scope strength about her uh, she's a, a beautiful filly to, to finish up on uh, i think anyone who's had anything to do with her through the early part of her career has spoken so highly of her so um going to watch this one with great interest um as i said if she is of interest to you today bring she's one that will when definitely go, go, back, we'll do that again go quick mind, just talk about it. Uh, in terms of sort of um the the shares available in in her but uh, a, a lovely, lovely, lovely style of filly. Yeah, I think the only, the only owners in her so far are Emirates, who of course purchased Moss Fun, who was out of her Schnitzel mare, who won the slipper, and Esther Jab, who was by Schnitzel, won the slipper, and Mitch Skinner, who bought Stay Inside, doing the slipper as well. So it's a slipper winning ownership. Um, they're there for a reason. As you can see, the filly before us team, she's uh, an absolute real deal. Uh, physical, we might just switch it the other way quickly. I thought for some of you might be interested, I know this bores the hell out of most people, but we might just quickly talk through, quickly, Confirmation 101. We're looking for a filly with the filly's head, a bit of quality, a nice broad head, nice big ear, nice big nostril. We're looking for a nice sort of length of rein and a neck that ties in through a shoulder at the right angle. A horse can only stretch or gallop as far as her nose, right? So if her head's high, she can't reach out that far. If she's thick through here or heavy through her shoulder, too heavy, she can't stretch out that far either, right? So she, you can see she's lovely and clean, but she's still got depth. she got awesome depth. See that angle to her shoulder? That will tell you where her front leg's going to land when she's galloping. And of course, the only way you can win a race or the best way to the fastest horses have to not only have a, a great length of stride, but they need to turn that stride over very quickly. You can only win a race by having a lot, like by having 
being fastest from A to B, you have to have a certain length of stride and turn it over very quickly, right? So she should have a great length of stride, given the length of her forearm, given the angle to her shoulder, but then she'll have a very quick turn of stride. She'll turn that stride over quickly because her foot hits the ground. She's got a very short paston, which then breaks over on her fetlock. She had a very short cannon, which then breaks over at her next joint, her knee. So as soon as she hits the ground, she's turning that, and it might only be a split second quicker, but that times 30, 40, 60, 160 times 200 over the length of a race, obviously adds up and adds up and adds up and builds into, you know, races where you're winning by a nose or a neck. It really counts. Her length of back, see her center of gravity is where her wither stops. That's where the jockey sits. It's right in the middle of her body. So she's able to, she's able to um, carry that weight balanced through all four legs. Very important. The length from her wither to her sacroiliac where her back bends and to the point of her tail is the same length. Really important because that allows her pelvis to get that hind leg right underneath to her center of gravity again so she can distribute that weight evenly which then allows her to push off better would you mind just facing the thing there please and then have a look at this the width through her pelvis just Sorry. facing the out this there way. towards yep. the paddocks please Sorry, this way Sorry. just towards the paddocks towards adrian please thank you just look at yeah and then have a look through here stop, 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 stop. this is the powerhouse look at this <laughs> see that width through her pelvis and how that ties into a gaskin and really low set hock. Like a weaker legged horse, a horse that might need time, might come in on those hocks and not have that width through her gaskins. Huge power behind the saddle as well. That equals gait speed. That equals ability to accelerate, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So um, dealing with the lovely proposition there, the written tycoon filly. But to be fair, all those horses you've seen there today, we've all been bought on the same specs, right? It's not just her. You, if you run back through the video footage which Emma's is taking here, and you look back through what we've bought, have a look at how low their knees are to the ground when they walk towards you. Like they've got super short cannons and uh, I, I can't tell you how well I feel we've bought. Of course, little proof will be in the pudding, but I really feel like we've bought extremely well this year. Thank you very much.